What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Librarians of Solana podcast. My name is T, and I am one of the librarians here in Solana in the world of Wraith. I've got something highly anticipated, much awaited, and very special, and that is, of course, the uh, Dash deck that Jacob and I crafted for U.S. Nationals. Uh, a lot of people have been asking to see this, to ask about matchups. I've gotten a lot of messages about how we sideboard in specific matchups and what the game plan changes between matchups. So we're going to go over that today. Uh, Jacob, how are you doing? Pretty good. Good to be here. Awesome. Awesome. We, uh, we piloted this deck at Nationals. You obviously did a lot better than I did at that event. I ran into some pretty tough matchups on day one, but you managed to get through those and make it into day two, and then all the way to top eight, and then all the way to top four. Um, how did you feel the deck ran through the course of the weekend? Oh, I felt it ran pretty smooth. Uh, even my some of my five matches were reasonable, I'd say. Uh, they all end up falling the other side of the coin, but that's how you can be. I did play a, four guardians, so I got pretty lucky in my matchups, for sure. Yeah, what was your what was your overall record in uh, classic constructed during the Swiss portion of the nationals event? Uh, I went six and two in constructed. So. Six and two, not bad, of course. Very good record, and then draft gave you the uh, the alley oop to make it into uh, into top eight. Yeah, for sure. I played uh, I played this deck at the Battle Hardened in Minneapolis this past weekend, and overall on the weekend I went eleven and three with it. I went five and two in the day one seven round battle hardened, and I went six zero in the day two, uh, the second battle hardened on Sunday, and then I lost in the quarterfinals. I got ninth in the first one, so very close to to back to back top eights with this deck, right off of a top eight at U.S. Nationals, and then almost two battle hardened top eights immediately after. So definitely a good deck in the in the format if uh, if someone like me can pilot it to a to a good finish. Um, <clears throat> but let's, uh, let's get into here. I've got some changes that we made for, or that I made for the battle hardened as well. And that we were talking about a little bit, uh, but I've got the main list pulled up for what we initially played at nationals here. And we're just going to like go through it and talk about some of the, some of the card choices where they came from, what the idea of this deck is and, uh, some of the play patterns, right? Yeah. So. We've got a lot of defense reactions in the deck, a lot of blues. We've got the item sweep for the Oldham matchup uh, and for other matchups where we just have to be shooting them down with the pistol. But there's also a lot of draft chaff in this pile. We've got things like Sun Kiss and Healing Bomb, Fiendel's Fighting Spirit, not a card you commonly see in Classic Instructed, um, Brutal Assault, <laughs> Last Ditch Effort, which we haven't seen in a hot minute, and uh, things like Blue Sift, Blue Whisper, which also haven't seen in a while. Springboard Somersault stands out as another weird, weird one. Um, let's talk about where the where these initially came from. So, um, I you know of course that I've been playing Control Dash for a long time. One of the very first decks that uh, that I picked up in Flesh and Blood, and one of the first decks that I was playing whenever I whenever I learned that you were also playing Flesh and Blood. Do you remember that RTN? Yeah, I do. Where, uh, it was a fun interactive experience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was an RTN that Jacob and I ran into each other at in St. Louis. It was at uh, Paragon. And Jacob was playing aggro boost dash, like full aggro boost dash, and I was playing full control dash. And it did not end well for Jacob. I just nope. blocked out, fatigued him. But that deck has changed a lot since then if you've been following my content for a while you know that i did a uh, deck tech with arsenal pass about the old control deck and recently as we were going through the uh, nationals results we noticed that there was a uh, an individual by the name of mike walker who top aided a nationals event with a control dash list and when we saw that we both did the uh, the spider-man meme where we were pointing at each other and we were like hey wait a minute so Jacob and I wanted to wanted to look into the list and see if it if it had legs and uh, if there were any changes that could be made before we took it to U.S. Nats. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit more about what that process was like, Jacob? Uh, so originally, when I first saw the deck and let's just started analyzing the list, I noticed he had all these boost cards that were super inefficient that the boost deck played. It's just they never actually wanted to play the cards. So it was the first thing I saw like, why are these even in the deck if you're not boosting? Uh, then we started talking about what would be better replacements, and then we just moved on to these 
generic crappy attacks that ended up being super relevant in a lot of matchups being there so uh can you give me like a like an example of what we decided why we were played link brutal assault so a, a big thing we realized like if you play against decks like dromai you need to be able to like going 2-2 two -two with your go again off your uh your weapon isn't good enough to clear a lot of their dragons but going two into a, a two cost four attack because you normally have your guns loaded preloaded you can go two go again and play another attack for four for just a blue pitch and you can clear almost any dragon they have with just that so that'll help you clear things like yenderai or uvia to make sure you're getting those out of the way at the important parts of the game the the initial list also had quite a few poppers um i think mike's list had 12 poppers in it we cut that back a little bit we went down to uh down to nine with three command and conquer and six Fiendel's fighting spirit opting not to play the blue one being that it's only five um, the Fiendel's fighting spirit also found a good home in the matchups against Fi and rune blades um, blocking out rosetta while gaining you a life or blocking a a phoenix flame off of a shuko so that it's only two getting some of that life back became a pretty important part of the deck uh, and then we also had some pretty weird cards in here, like Healing Balm and Sunkiss. Which, uh, how did you, how did you feel those played for you during uh, during the Nationals event? Uh, they they were actually fantastic. There's a lot of time you just like shoot your gun and then give it go again and just play a Healing Balm and catch people completely off guard. Uh, and they're just like, oh man, I got to play this even longer. And I thought I was finally getting them low to break points, but nope, you just sit there and turtle up. <laughs> yeah, you just go infinite health. At the, uh, at the Sunday Battle Hardened, I played a game against Viscerai, and I started the game with pitch a yellow, load both my items, uh, play a Healing Balm, play a Sigil of Solace, go to 46, Arsenal of Springboard, Somersault, and Pass. And my opponent looked at me, and he looks down at the table, and he hadn't been watching the top tables at this point, so he didn't know that I was doing, like, Control Dash. And he looks me in the eyes and he goes, what the Quack. f*** is this? It was it was so funny. Just like it, I broke him. Like that was the moment. He looked down at the table and he's like, "What? What? What? Why number go up? <clears throat> go down? Why number go up? I didn't go below forty in that matchup until like turn eight or nine or something ridiculous. It was it was so funny. He was just like, "How do I ever win? How?" And uh, he did not. He did not win. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, what do you think makes this deck different than uh, than most control decks? Uh, just really the incremental advantage you gain just from any time they have an off turn, you just have super consistent damage to throw back to your opponent. And because it's just all in play, you don't have to worry about what you draw and how clunky stuff is. And you get to play a bunch of blues to play around all the ice decks floating around. And uh, you have access to really good arcane barrier as well. So. What do you think your favorite cheeky play that you've discovered is with uh, with the way this list is built? Because I definitely have one, but I want to see if yours is the same as mine. Oh, uh, I, I wouldn't even uh, just like attacking, being attacked and just like over blocking for find elves gaining life or just taking damage to trigger all your life gain are the things that I really like doing. But my favorite thing that I've gotten to do with this deck a couple times so far is like starting on turn zero having a this rounds on me in your hand and you like load your guns and shoot and they go ah i'm just getting a free mulligan so they like block with a card and you give it go again and then you play this rounds on me and they get their card back except you now have the this rounds on me effect for their first turn which yep, normally like is. normally like the first turn they get like all this tempo back because they they are going on the first turn where you don't have to draw up but you yeah, just take a lot a of that. Play. It's yeah. it's so funny, and like when you do it, they're just like, "Oh, I messed up," but they can't not block because otherwise, like if you don't have it, they just took two for nothing. So <laughs> it's it's got to be one of my favorite plays in the deck so far that I've found. It can also like help you find. Uh, it can also like help you find a, a second item on the very first turn if you don't already have one, which is always a good spot to be in in those matchups where you're playing more than one item. Yeah, getting to Whisper and Sift to dig for your items on turn one is just so super powerful. Like Dash normally can't play these kind of cards because you got to worry about your boost numbers, and then, but this list doesn't care. It just does whatever it wants. Yeah, this this list specifically is almost never boosting, 
The only time you would ever boost in this list um, is in the very last turn of the game against a matchup where you're playing the Ex Achilles Accelerators, which is just matchups where you have Arcane Barrier, so your Viscerai, your Briar, your Icelander. Um, you can like play a zipper hit and boost it. That way, even if you miss, you can get another shot off on the gut. So you get the extra damage from the zipper hit applied. So if they're super low, you can get them and kill them that way. Um, yeah, there is a more complicated line of pitch stacking because it does actually come up. You can pitch stack your things next to each other and boost then, but that's the only other thing that ever happens. So I've yeah. done it once playing the deck. It's not a very <laughs> uh, key play. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't doesn't come up that often where you're where you're pitch stacking your uh, your mech blues, but when it does, you feel like a genius. What do you think some of the key turns or the the key turning points of this deck are whenever you're playing any any given matchup? Well, if you're playing against all them, it's for certainly when you find your second plasma purifier because that's when you can start putting out real damage. Uh, before that, it's really barely worth attacking because they just give you a card and block, and you don't get anything in because they normally don't need their whole hand. So, but I think it's like the only only matchup like that. You just sit there and block everybody else pretty much. It's only ones where you try and assemble Exodia and play all the items. So you've also got um, there's a couple other matchups where you do it, like Dromai or Icelander, where yeah, but you don't you don't need the items and. If per se in those matchups to actually start shooting so yeah that's, shoot. that's reasonable yeah talk me through the equipments that we ended up choosing to play for nationals for everybody listening why did we land on these nine equipments yeah i think the original list only mm -hmm. had seven equipment and he wasn't playing the full suite of iron rots or iron hides i guess not iron rot uh and we i just immediately thought that it was very weird because you really don't you don't boost the the your your, your Achilles accelerators at all so why was it being played in the matchup so you didn't need Arcane Barrier so it looked like kind of an oversight for him just playing that into everybody uh, then uh, Skullcap we just really want the separate blocks because you there's so many four power attacks with on hits like Snatchers running around in so many different decks right now that you just need to split block a three block and a one block on them uh, and just having more access to that kind of effect is just more important than cycling your arsenal because the deck's pretty redundant so you don't need the, the filtration from it and then a uh, tunic is just an all-star <laughs> so you just can use it to load your pistol and do all kinds of different things and it gets icelander and uh obviously heart is just here there to block for a few and then we have the the rest of the null rune for the icelander matchup which comes in clutch a lot of the time there's a video of me playing the icelander matchup on camera at the minneapolis battle hardened on the youtube channel where they were streaming it i'll have to I don't quite remember what the channel was off the top of my head, but I'll post that right here in the in the box. So if you want to go watch that matchup and see how this deck plays specifically into Icelander or into Ranger, I played both of those on camera. And then Jacob, what did you play against on camera? Uh, I believe by twice, Alden twice, and I think that's it. Okay, so yeah, if uh, if anybody wants to see the Fi Oldham. Lexi or Icelander matchups, you can find uh, either me or Jacob playing against those on camera in various events. Uh, and then we'll also have the full matchup and sideboarding guide available on the Patreon after this video goes live. Um, let's talk about the changes that I made and that we discussed for the Tree Frog Dash version 2.0, which is what I played in the Sunday version of the Battle Hardened. Uh, and why some of those changes were made. So, starting off, uh, we can see immediately that there is no E-Strike in this list, uh, no Red Findles Fighting Spirit, and no Teclo Foundry Heart in the equipments, uh, down to eight equipments, and then I just filled it out with some more blues. The reason we made those changes, Red Findles Fighting Spirit can often just become a detriment um, by being a red pitch and a two block that isn't always a gain one when you kind of need to block on hits in the matchups where you're blocking out a lot. It also improves your uh, your Viscerai matchup by just turning it into a blue. It lets you it lets you keep cards in your deck by just pitching three to rune chance where there that's pretty much always going to be a, an option for you is just pitching to block the rune chance. 
And then E-Strike, also same reason, just kind of became a detriment at times, being a red pitch. You can turn it into almost any blo blue block three. The reason we were playing E-Strike to begin is because you can gain some equity in the Oldham matchup when they keep dedicating their shield to the chain. You can reload your gun and then attack with E-Strike with go again. And they can either block that with the shield or they can block the pistol with the shield. But you get to guarantee a little bit of extra damage in that matchup specifically. But sometimes in that matchup, it just matters more to have the blue to make sure that you're able to play things like your Spark of Genius to go get another item or to play an item to begin with. The other cut was the Teclo Heart. And this was something that you and I were both mulling on for a while about if it even needed to be in the deck. And I think the ultimate answer is no. You're going to gain a lot more block power from the mana you're going to get from the Tunic. Whether it's against Oldham when they have Heart of Ice, you're able to use a defense reaction that you normally wouldn't be able to use. Whether it's against Phi, and then you're able to play all three Oasis Respites in your deck instead of not being able to. Um, do you have any thoughts about, about any of those changes? Uh, so I, I like the, the equipment. I was super low on uh, the Heart in the first place because it was really only for catching some breakpoints occasionally and helped, helped a lot in Briar, but I ended up liking the Tunic more the more I played with it because you can always block Arcane. They do some amount of Arcane almost every turn. You can normally get your equity that way uh, in that matchup. So I, I ended up like not only one ending and it's Bravo because I think Tunic is slightly better into uh, Oldham as well because like you said, Heart of Ice is annoying. A lot of people have been playing it into the matchup, but and they don't have too many dominated attacks. So the armor doesn't really come up too much, but so, but Bravo isn't represented enough for the one you to play that card. Basically, was the consensus. Yeah, Bravo and Ranger were the two matchups that I was playing the hard into, and those are just not really matchups you expect to run into a bunch. And just having the the tunic, like against Ranger, if it's Lexi, they're going to give you a frostbite. You can use the tunic in response to to pay for the frostbite or whatever. And then against Bravo, like you said, there's not very much Dominate that they're going to be able to hit you with once you assemble stuff. So you can just use the Tunic for an early respite or paying into your Ironhide or whatever, loading a gun, getting some value. And just it just provides more to the matchup than having the extra two block. So closing thoughts on the deck before we, uh, before we wind this out and direct people over to the uh, sideboard guide. Do you think that this deck is going to be well positioned into the new meta? Uh, I do think so because it's still you're you're really only bad matchup is Phi, and if, unless you're expecting more than twenty percent Phi, it's still having an eighty percent win against the field is a great place to be. Like, that's really insane when you think about it. <laughs> and then also, like it's not terrible into every build of Phi. The Kadachi build of Phi feels like a really good matchup for, for this deck because you can get them down to the end game. And the problem with the Ember Blade Phi is that they can still just apply so much pressure with like end of our turn, pick up a Phoenix Flame, attack with Phoenix Flame for zero, Ember Blade for three, pick up Phoenix Flame, attack for two, and just attack for five, and then end with another card if they still have one. But the Kadachi yeah. Fi, you get them down to the end game, and they can't really do anything because they're usually one only playing one Phoenix Flame, and two, they've just got Kadachi, so they're gonna go like one one bad attack for two, which is way like worlds different. It's much easier to, to fatigue them. So even if Kadachi Fi is like five percent of that twenty percent Fi, that means that it's just like eighty five percent of the matchups you have a good matchup into. And so yeah, I agree. This deck is gonna be. Really good into the format to come as well, more than just what it is already now. All right, well, that about wraps up the Dash Control uh, mini deck tech with teammate Jacob Baugh. Uh, if you're looking for more content from myself or Jacob or the rest of the Team Magnolia Pro Team, check us out on Twitter, at TCG Gaming for me. That'll be up on the screen here at Jacob A. Baugh for Jacob, and then at uh, Magnolia Pro Team for our team to find more content. And then it'll also end up on the Librarians of Solana YouTube channel and the Librarians of Solana Patreon. For now, thanks for checking us out, and I'll catch you in the next one.